Hello and welcome to Leading Through Crisis, conversations between European and American business leaders. This series is dedicated to facilitating conversations between business leaders and exploring how they are navigating a changing business environment. This is just a snapshot of the discussion. An audio recording of the entire conversation is available to members of the EACC upon request. Send your request with your name and company affiliation to EACC at europe-cincinnati.com. This episode's conversation was recorded in October of 2020. Again, a very special thank you to our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannockburn Global Forex, Frost, Brown, and Todd. And now here's your moderator, Kai Bitter, a member of the EACC Board of Directors and an attorney with Frost, Brown, Todd. Hello and welcome to Leading Through Crisis, conversations between European and American business leaders. I'm Kai Bitter and I will be your host. This series is dedicated to facilitating conversations between business leaders and exploring how they're navigating a changing business environment. I would like to thank our sponsors, Bannock Byrne Global Forex, Clark Schaefer Hackett, and of course, Frost Brown Todd. Just a quick reminder that this video is only a snapshot of our conversation. Access to the complete recording, as well as other episodes, are available for download or streaming at europe-cincinnati.com. We will be speaking today with Sylvia Buxton, President and CEO, North America for Perfetti Vermel. Perfetti is a maker of Mentis Mint, Air Hats, and other well-known candy brands. Also with us today is Peter File, Vice President and General Manager of Stilbert Drives. Stover's claim is that they make the world's toughest gearboxes. Hey, Peter, great to meet you virtually. It's uh, the first time that we have had a chance to meet each other in person, and I'm really interested to hear more about your company and how the two of us can share best practices that hopefully will help other companies in future crises. My background is in marketing. I started my career in Canada at Reckitt Van Kieser joined Hershey, uh, spent a lot of time in Canada, and then moved to the U.S. with that company, and then had global and regional roles with Hershey before leaving and joining Perfetti five years ago. So Perfetti Van Mel is a global, privately held company. Our North American headquarters are in Erlanger, Kentucky, and there we make uh, airheads as well as pack Mentos gum. Hi, Sylvia. Uh, it's definitely good to get to know you. I know of your company. I'm a fan of your company and a customer of your products. So uh, uh, very close to my heart. Um, my name is Peter File. I'm general manager of Sturber Drives here in Maysville, Kentucky, which is about an hour east of uh, Cincinnati on the Ohio River. Um, we are a family owned business, privately held 85 plus years in business. And we make a very high end um, automation components for anything that moves in a factory, specifically gearboxes, motors and uh, electronics. Sounds great, looking forward to it. Since we're in the middle of the pandemic, um, I got to start with asking, what has worked so far for you, Sylvia? Yeah, there have been a lot of things that have worked well and that we hope to also continue uh, when we finally exit the pandemic. I would say, uh, first and foremost, we really focused our crisis efforts on our company values and use those as the lens through which we developed any plans that we had for the crisis. So first and foremost, uh, our company value of care for people. We wanted to make sure that anything that we did during the crisis and as an essential business, we were able to stay open throughout was with that in mind. And we wanted to make sure that our employees who were coming into our facilities every day uh, had the level of comfort that we were taking the pandemic seriously and that we were keeping them safe. Um, I think one thing that this particular crisis has done is it's added a lot of anxiety to everyone and that includes our employees, includes our, and includes our customers, our suppliers, all our stakeholders. So we believe that crafting a very clear message that we update regularly and we have one message to all stakeholders. We began uh, as soon as the crisis became evident uh, having town hall meetings weekly with our employees and it was basically me stating everything we could think of about the crisis so that everyone had the same information 
it wasn't all good. It wasn't all good news, but it was honest, it was transparent, and it was real time. Trade shows are uh, an important selling tool in both of your industries, I believe. Um, do you think that that format will change even after the pandemic is over? From a trade show perspective, I would think um, that going forward, there is still a need for some in-person interactions to build rapport, to be able to physically touch, feel, eat uh, the samples. In the short term, I would anticipate that those sorts of trade shows will be limited. Uh, and if they are going forward, many safety pro protocols would have to be taken and probably attendance, both in terms of uh, the companies who are displaying at those trade shows, as well as those who are attending would probably be less. And that there would be a bit of a hybrid approach where we would see some online systems in addition to the in-person trade show. I think uh, as leaders, uh, we tend to want to control things. And uh, in a crisis like this, uh, it's very tough to maintain control of all the things that you try to control. And one thing that happened to me personally is, you know, I'm basically my role is now as a mentor and a leader. I do strategy, culture, people and that type of thing. So I'm in a mentor role all the time. I'm really not doing as much as I did in years past. And when the crisis hit, I reverted back to a doer and uh, Mr. Fix-It. And uh, a, a colleague of mine pointed that out to me. And once they said I had transformed from my natural mentor role to this Mr. Fix-It, um, and I was able to convert back to that mentor role, that, that meant a whole lot to me. And I was much more effective. And Sylvia, just like you, um, our leadership team stepped up, our frontline leaders stepped up, our employees stepped up and really took all that burden off of me so that I could go back to leading and mentoring as opposed to trying to fix everything that I could not control myself. Would you say that you are back to a new normal? What is normal? What? I was gonna say, I was actually gonna say that. What is normal? Uh, no. No, I don't, I think there will never be a back to normal. I think there will be a next normal or new normal, however you want to describe it. I think our sales team will never go back to traveling the way that they used to, and there will be a much more hybrid approach to uh, selling. I think likewise for trade shows, from an operational standpoint, I think that many of the new safety protocols that we've put into place will be with us for the long haul. And I think that uh, from a consumer standpoint, the trends that we see in uh, how consumers uh, purchase our products as well as consume our products, those trends will stay at least partially as we exit the, uh, the worst parts of this crisis. So we haven't touched on this at all, but the way that people talk uh, or purchase confection products now has moved more to online than it used to be. The frequency with which people go to shop in the stores is less. The amount that they buy at, at one time has changed. What they buy has changed. Pack sizes that they buy have changed. And we've had to adjust to all of that in our operations. I think all of those will continue to be the next normal or the new normal. And it will be up to us to make sure that we put the plans in place, the systems in place, and the programs in place to adjust to that next normal. There's... Certainly the word normal has been, has been uh, used a lot, new normal um, versus old normal. I think there's a, a current reality and we're moving towards a uh, future reality. And I'm very excited about it, honestly, because we're taking um, the best of the way things used to be and learning from this crisis and adding a lot of um, positives, uh, the remote work, the digital, the e-commerce, um, the lean, uh, doing more with less, and yet um, creating a, a, a good customer experience, even if it's not as much in person. I'm very excited about all those things. What I worry about uh, most is the relationship piece, the mental health piece, and uh, uh, just personal well-being because we are tribal, 
animals and we need that uh, personal contact. We like to hug. We like to look people in the eye. We like to read body language. And, you know, we're, we're, certainly the digital tools are great, but they are not personal. And uh, we, we have to figure out somehow in this new reality uh, to satisfy the human needs that we have along with the business needs. And uh, that's a challenge. And I don't think anybody has all the answers. I'm excited that we will find them and it'll be a better world, um, but there's a lot to do in the meantime to get there. Never waste a good crisis. Amen. Not sure who said that. Many people have recently. Again, a very special thank you to our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannockburn Global Forex, Frost, Brown, and Todd. Thank you for joining us today. As a reminder, this is just a snapshot of the discussion. An audio recording with the entire conversation is available to members of the EACC upon request. Send your request with your name and company affiliation to eacc at europe-cincinnati.com.